So again, today is March 16th, happy Global African Women's Day. And you all may be familiar with the fact that we now officially have a Harriet Tubman Day, and that was March 10th. So I'm gonna say this is still Harriet Tubman's week. I am here with you today to host our Underground Railroad Leadership Camp Orientation. And our orientation is an opportunity for us to come off the camera, see each other's faces for the first time, and also talk logistically about some of the things we need to do to make sure that our experience next week is not just enriching and enjoyable, but also safe. And so we want to make sure that you, as our parents and our chaperones at home, and also the young people, because you'll be there actually with us, um, understand the nature of what we're doing and the potential for leadership development, but also some of the potential opportunities for tragedy if we aren't safety and security minded. So I'm going to begin by sharing my screen and going through the orientation packet. Uh, you will have to share this packet with your parents. Um, and let me know if you're not able to see that once my screen actually comes up. Okay. Okay, can everybody see my screen? You can come off mic and or mute, just say amen, hallelujah, yeah. praise yes. the Lord. Yes, yes I can. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, feel free to stop me at any time. Just real quick, basic foundational logistical things that we need to add as another layer um, to the applications that you guys have hopefully already seen and completed. Um, so basic orientation. Uh, because you guys, some of you are under the age of 18, we are asking for an additional permission slip per child. Um, and so the permission slip is simple. Um, it is with pleasure that Ty Tours invites your youth to our first annual Underground Railroad Leadership Camp. Uh, we would like to immerse our scouts in the wilderness for a fun and knowledgeable experience. Um, so underneath of that are some of the things that you may want to put into your young person's um, knapsack, whether they have a backpack, that's what we recommend, or just a duffel bag, um, whatever you have. Uh, we will be also providing a few things. Um, so it's important that you let us know what you do have so that we can provide what you don't. Um, so that would include a tent. If you have a tent, bring it. If you don't, no problem, we'll provide it for you. If you have a sleeping bag, bring that. If you don't, you may enjoy a pillow. Most of the nights that we are camping in Virginia will be in a resort. So this resort is called Massanutten, but we will have a day and a half experience where we will camp overnight in the Shenandoah Valley National Park. So this entire region of Virginia is called the Shenandoah Valley in acknowledgement of the indigenous people that once lived in this region. And it's, it's still named after uh, the various uh, Shenandoah Valley um, nations today. Um, however, uh, we will only stay there one night, one night and a half in the Shenandoah Valley uh, National Park. And so if you have a sleeping bag, bring it. If you have a pillow, bring it. Uh, if not, let us know. Uh, we recommend a raincoat, a small raincoat, more like a poncho, um, something you can roll up and put inside of your backpack. Um, not an umbrella. Umbrellas are a little more difficult to maneuver in the wild. Um, and the Shenandoah National Valley is definitely not your walk in the park. Um, it is a real uh, wild national park. And so, um, we say that uh, bringing a, a raincoat as opposed to things like an umbrella are a little more convenient. Pajamas, extra clothes, uh, one or two of the days that we're there, you may get a little dirty. Uh, one of the days that we practice kayaking, you may get wet. Um, and so bring an extra pair of clothes. Um, for you ladies, I noticed we have a few young ladies that are joining us, which I'm very excited about. Um, for a few of the young ladies, uh, don't bring your entire uh, wardrobe of extra clothing. We know that you're fashionable, but maybe just a nice hoodie, um, nice 
pair of jeans, um, maybe some khakis or some multi uh, pocketed um, cargo pants. Say again. We definitely uh, want you to bring in extra outfit, but I think one extra outfit will be just fine. Um, then bring your favorite snacks, uh, whatever that means to you. We will provide you with meals every day, every meal, including snacks. However, um, even though we will provide you with meals every day, every meal, including snacks, if you are, you know, from the Middle East and you prefer hummus and grape leaf wraps, um, you might want to bring those uh, because we want to make sure that you enjoy yourself and we don't want anybody to be hangry, right? A little hungry, a little angry because they don't like the meals that we prepare. Um, and just to let you know, we will have meals uh, that accommodate vegetarian diets, um, we will have meals that accommodate gluten-free diets. Um, and so if you have a special diet, you want to indicate that um, on the medical form, which we'll go through next. Um, if you have a water bottle, um, please bring it. There will be meals where we'll drink out of plastic water bottles, but by all means, we encourage you to use um, reusable water bottles and protect our environment. Uh, plastic bottles, even when recycled, are never going to compare to the, the carbon footprint of just a reusable bottle. Uh, we will also provide you with a reusable bottle um, as a keepsake that you can go home with. And so if you have one, bring it. If not, you will have one before you finish. Um, a first aid kit. Um, something as small as going to the dollar store and getting something that you can just keep inside your backpack. Um, you don't need to get the industrial size uh, first aid kit. We have a first aid kit. Um, there is an uh, infirmary on of the Massanut and Resort. Um, so if anything happens, you will have access uh, to health care, but it's always it's like someone else was trying to be admitted into, I didn't see who it was. Oh, Natty. Okay. One of our uh, incredible facilitators. Um, he just joined us. Thank you, Natty, for tuning in. No, you're just getting off work and we appreciate you being here to meet some of our parents and young people. So we're currently going through the additional participation consent form uh, for our excursion next week. And we're going through some of the things we would like young scouts to pack um, and just reassuring them that if they don't have the things on this list, it's perfectly okay, just let us know. Um, so we talked about first aid kits. Any Dollar Tree across America will have one for just $1. If you don't have it, that's okay we are prepared. Um, we also recommend that you bring toiletries. We've had young people come and only pack toys, Game Boys, uh, whatever the PS2, I don't know what the game is today, but <laughs> that's all they had in their bag. And so we didn't know that's what they were going to have in their bags until we got there. So toothbrushes, toothpastes, we say these things and they may seem a little redundant, uh, but we just want to make sure that for the record, we've let you know that you will need toiletries. This is not a hotel that we're going to, so there won't be a front desk where if we run out, uh, we can run downstairs and grab one uh, from the concierge. Uh, we need these things with us because this resort is self-contained, meaning that you must bring everything with you that you will use. Um, next, sunscreen. We always press it. Um, I know Black people have melanin in their skin, but Black people need sunscreen too. Even if it's just a nice hat to protect your forehead, um, if the sun is uh, on, if it's at its highest peak, and we will do outdoor activities when the sun is at its peak. Um, so if you wanna bring a little uh, sunscreen, uh, we suggest it. A compass. A compass may not be something you have in your inventory, but we do recommend it. Our party stays together. We use the buddy-buddy system. Everybody has a buddy, and you want to go anywhere without your buddy, even though our young people will have access to the grounds um, without 
us during their free time. Um, and so that means they may go to the recreation center, they may go to the swimming pool, there will always be lifeguards, there will always be attendants at each one of these places. Um, however, when they go to those places, we recommend that you always have a buddy. And uh, that just was a segue from the fact that we would like you to consider having a compass um, for your own uh, safety and security and uh, orientation. So rope. Um, rope is something that we, rep, uh, we recommend that every person that camps keep in their backpack. It doesn't have to be a long, you know, I'm going to exercise for the next Olympics uh, rope. It's something uh, as long as a jump rope, but as strong as a sailor's rope. And you can find that easily at any outdoor store, REI, um, Different stores have uh, access to these ropes. Even Walmart has a camping section. Again, if you don't have the rope, don't, you know, don't fret. Uh, we will have these, uh, in, in, uh, I was about to say ingredients. Y'all know I, I love a good meal. Um, you will have these essential items. Uh, pocket knives. Um, yes, it is okay if your youth has a pocket knife. Please don't give them the kitchen knife because we've had young people bring uh, knives from inside the kitchen for cooking, uh, but a pocket knife, they have Swiss Army, different brands. Uh, some of those knives have multiple tools on them and there will be an opportunity for the young people to learn some knife work and to learn what the different tools in the pocket knife are for. And so if you bring a pocket knife, that will be great. If not, uh, we will have pocket knives available. Um, binoculars, uh, we'll do hikes. Uh, you'll see beautiful landscaping and mountains and trails. Um, sometimes you wanna see a little further away. The wildlife that's there, um, they don't always come as close because this is the wild. Um, this is not a sanitized uh, wild area where the deer are accustomed to cars running through. This area um, in some places, they're accustomed to, you know, I don't know, uh, automobile free environment. So they they may be alarmed by our presence. And so having binoculars will help you get a better look into their habitat. Um, and flashlight. When you're outside in the dark in the tent, there is uh, the flashlight is necessary. Even again, the dollar store, one dollar, bring a flashlight if you have the ability to. When you uh, decide to uh, go from one tent to the other and the campfire has died, you might want a flashlight. Um, batteries, you'll always need an extra pair of batteries. Um, a folding shovel you won't need. Um, we will have one for the campsite though. Um, if you wanna bring your own, um, just to have it in your personal inventory, uh, we recommend that if you decide that this trip is gonna be the beginning of your lifelong camping adventure. Um, Flint and steel, we will have that. You won't need it. Uh, we will recommend that you bring your school ID. Always go everywhere with identification of the utmost importance. And then we go below our permission slip. We just ask that you complete your emergency contact. Uh, we don't foresee any emergency situations. Uh, we do a two adult um, per eight young people ratio. And so there'll be more than enough uh, for curators. The curators that are on the line today, I'm gonna allow them to introduce themselves. Um, so you'll see that you're in good hands, um, but we still want an emergency contact um, just in case. And if you have any medications that your child has to take, maybe they have a food allergy to peanuts or uh, perhaps they're allergic to um, I've seen all types of uh, food allergies, maybe bee stings are uh, life-threatening um, to some young people. We need to know those things so that we can make sure that we're prepared to help your young person um, if they have to administer that medication, an EpiPen, et cetera. Um, so basic permission slip in addition to the application that we've asked you all to complete and send back as soon as possible. 
We also ask that you guys fill out a photo reuse form. That's because you are definitely models for our next brochure. And we just wanna make sure that everybody is okay with that in advance. Um, we wanna make sure that uh, we don't post your picture um, in the cover of our next summary report and you say, no, I never wanted my child to be, uh, to have their picture taken. <laughs> That's against our uh, culture or religion. Um, so if you don't want to be in a picture, then that is also something that we want you to clearly state in advance. Um, but if you're okay with it, please fill it out and uh, send it back to us with the permission slip. We'll collect it um, on the first day. Now we're going to talk about the very intensive medication form. Um, so uh, all of these things, again, are optional. Um, the HIPAA law protects your medical identity. And so we're not probing for your medical, um, you know, your latest diagnosis for whatever ailment you may be ailing from at this moment. What we're trying to do is protect your young person. We want to make sure that if there's anything, if your young person has asthma, we need to know because we're going to be walking up mountains. And it doesn't mean they can't walk up the mountain with us. Uh, but if that happens, we wanna know where their pump is. We wanna know how to administer it. We wanna know if they know how to. do it. Um, hopefully at this point, <laughs> they do. Um, these uh, medical forms, they help to uh, make sure we're all prepared. So you have medical form A and medical forms. Um, after you fill in the blanks, if you have, um, yeah. And then we have uh, a, a COVID waiver. Um, so we are going to give inside of the welcome kit. Um, every young person will have uh, a COVID test. Um, if they have any symptoms, only if they exhibit symptoms, we would ask them to test um, to see, you know, to make sure that we get a negative result. Um, I don't suspect that you would send your ill child to come and camp with us. Um, I'll say that it's just important that that we're protected and that we're operating uh, in a way that keeps us all safe. And so we've all lived through the last two years. So we understand why, why that's necessary. Um, but this is the COVID waiver. If your child does get COVID and they didn't have COVID before they left, it's not our fault. Please know that we're doing everything in our power to keep everybody safe. And so this um, waiver is actually from the Department of Rec and Parks. It's not us, but we appreciate it because it makes sure that not only are you safe and your child is safe, but we are too. So that is it. We ask that you include that um, on the day that on the day that you are there. Um, before we move on to a few introductions, I just want to make sure that we answer any questions you guys may have um, about the information that we just shared. Okay. So if we don't have any questions, now I would like to do a few introductions. I think it's important that we all know each other. And um, even though some of us will only meet virtually, I think that technology uh, during COVID showed us that you can still create meaningful connections uh, online through Zoom, because Zoom is the new standard <laughs> in many ways. Uh, so we'll start with our curators. Um, I'd like to begin with Jennifer because it says she has to leave. She has a class at seven. So you can go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and um, let us know what you'll be doing uh, during the leadership camp this week. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with everybody tonight. So awesome to see everyone. My name is Jennifer Falayan. I am Cherokee, Pueblo, and Aztec. Um, I identify as Indigenous and I will be sharing some Indigenous teachings while on the camp. Um, and so that'll be fun to have like some interaction, something creative. I'm an artist, I do graphic design. Um, I recently traveled to South Africa with Kim and the Teaching Artist Institute. I was a keynote speaker at the uh, Artisan Conference. So I'm very honored to be a part of the family now. 
And I have a passion for the arts and culture and really honoring our roots and our ancestors, especially um, as people of color in this country and other areas, I think it's important to highlight our strengths and our ancestors and what we really have to bring to the table and not just focus on the atrocities and the trauma that comes along with that history. So I'm excited to travel and learn as much as possible as well. So thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, Jen. Um, I think it's important that we always acknowledge the land that we're on. In the Shenandoah Valley, I mean, that's a powerful area for the indigenous. And we would be remiss to go there to talk about our own history, to use our understanding of the skills needed to escape from enslavement and not talk about the indigenous communities that were a part of that escape that helped us do it, like the Seminoles and so many others. And so I appreciate the fact that uh, we're able to acknowledge your land um, Turtle Island, and also your role in aiding our people to freedom. Um, and I think that it really talks to what our relationship has to be now, today. Um, and, and so, so many things that I'm excited about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so next we have um, Natty, uh, uh, another one of our instructors that I see on the call today. Um, Natty, could you tell us a little about yourself? Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. How is everyone doing uh, this evening of the afternoon? Uh, my name is Nati, um, born and bred in South, from South Africa, son of the soil. And uh, I work in DC. I've been uh, in the States for the past 12 years uh, by way of London. Um, yes, so uh, during this excursion, I will be um, touching more on the basis of the trust, trans Atlantic you no know, slavery, how we got here, and um, not to make comparisons, but to 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 put into perspective how you know the slavery itself, how it, it it affected also, you know, we have black on black slavery. We don't talk about it. How did it come about? When did it start? And then how how did that affect you know the the community as we talk about the the villages within the black communities uh, in in Africa? And then we want to also talk about the basics of camping. What is camping? What we need in camping? And how is that relevant with with where we are now? Because now we have the Western camping, like what when Kim was talking that you can get some of the stuff at Walmart at you no know, REI. So how did we get some of these basic essentials during, you know, the 1900s, the 15th, whenever that was, you know, and because for us as Black people, we've been camping. And then, of course, you know, with the Indigenous you know, uh, culture as well, the, the camping has been uh, one of the things that we have been doing. And then we find ourselves, we have not been improvising, but we've been finding ways around how to know use some of the essentials that are around us to um to 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 complete you know our stay in the wild so those are some of the things that we'll be talking about and of course and a little bit of uh communication through rhythm through dance so how does dance come into play when we're talking about communication because we communicate through dance our bodies you know we don't have to, i don't have to to speak I can dance and you can listen and you can watch and you can respond, call and response. So all of those uh, little nuances we're gonna be uh, sharing with the young kings and the young queens during um, this beautiful you know, excursion. So that's, that's what I'm bringing with me, you know, um, to this beautiful village. Yes, and it's an incredible gift you're bringing your talents. Um, I love how holistic it is. And I love how we're going to the roots of scouting. And uh, it's become really um, whitewashed in you know, the colonizers world. Um, but there is balance. And through the study of our history and going back to nature and really becoming more comfortable with that, Ah! Uh -huh. 
even though we have grown us to go back to nature and to be comfortable there. And that means that we have to go there. and <laughs> We have to immerse ourselves. And so thank you for being willing to bring us camping best practices from an indigenous perspective, because that's so important, um, especially to better understand my own cultural narrative. Um, so I don't, is Hannibal L with us today? Hannibal. So we also have East Shakara Hannibal L, and he works with an organization called the Roots of Scouting, and he will also be with us. Um, if you have our application, then you've probably seen um, or read a little about his bio. You know that he is, oh, shout out to Mama Ade. Yes, I'm seeing it in the comments. <laughs> How can we ever <laughs> not acknowledge Mama Ade Olomo? our female king out of Ohio. <laughs> yes, queen. Um, and so uh, we're gonna give Mama Ade an opportunity to speak. Everyone will have an opportunity to introduce themselves and ask questions. Um, we'll, we call that passing the basket. Everybody must put some energy into the basket. Um, and so because Hannibal L is not here, uh, I will place into the basket on his behalf. He will be with us next week. Um, he's an ex-military Marine. Um, he also worked in law enforcement. And now he's an African-centered drum teacher in the uh, Park Vibe <laughs> drummers at Drew Hill Park. And so that was a quite the voyage that his life circle uh, went on. And so I appreciate his narrative and I can't wait for him to be with us um, next week. So now I guess I'm gonna pass the mic again. And uh, since Jennifer <laughs> said Mama Ade Olomo put her on the spot, uh, Mama Ade, would you like to go first as we pass the basket? Um, no problem. I <clears throat> I am Ade Olomo. Greetings, everyone. Sending much love to you all. I can't wait for this adventure. This is something that our students really, really need to get out of their own backyard and to get into another environment um, so that they can learn more about themselves. Uh, so I bring with me um, life skills. Um, uh, creativity uh, and spirituality. Um, how do we harmonize ourselves with mother nature, being one with mother nature um, uh, and the spirit of the drum, the voice of our ancestors. I also am a drum teacher as well as uh, life skills. And so um, me and my, my, <laughs> my bad back <laughs> is gonna come scouting um, so if I say, y'all go ahead on, just go ahead on, <laughs> I'll catch up to you, but I'll be there. I'll be there. I can't wait for it. It's uh, going to be such a wonderful experience. So. Yes, Mama Ade, it's always a pleasure to have our elders here with us. Um, I never take that for granted. Uh, last year, our Underground Railroad excursion, it's a three day, like a mini version of the leadership camp um, that we do over the summer. And Mama Ade came with her crew. She's based in Ohio. And um, she was out there in the tent camping. There was a rainstorm, a hurricane that came <laughs> and rained on us. And Mama Ade, as an elder, she was a trooper. I mean, she was there in the tent. She didn't bat an eye. We were inside the tent. We were floating on the water. This is how much it rained um, last summer. And Mama Ade was as cute in her all white and head wrap. And <laughs> I just appreciated that so much. Yeah. Um, memories are important. Yeah. So uh, I wanna keep the circle going. Uh, someone else, uh, don't make us choose you family. Just come on <laughs> off, unmute yourself and introduce us and tell us who invited you here today. Okay, I guess I'll go first. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> I'm Shakira. Um, this is Burton, referring to my two daughters who are leaders in their own right at Forest Park and their why. <laughs> um, but I appreciate you all. I Listening to you all, I'm excited 
for them to get to learn from you all. The, just an amazing group of people just from listening to you all on the Zoom, getting them back into camp. And it's like something where as Black people, we don't camp because, you know, our grandparents didn't camp mm -hmm. and they didn't teach our parents to camp. So we don't camp. We don't know anything about our, you know, heritage or how they did anything camping before the store came, like I said. So I'm excited for my children to get to know you all and what you guys can bring to them. They're also artists mm -hmm. in their own right, Zariah Simmons and Mia Brown. So me and my husband, uh, again, we, we, we are very excited about their week coming. And I appreciate you all. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much. I love your energy. This is gonna be fun. Thank you so much, Mom. We appreciate you being here, Ms. Simmons. Anyone else, please come off the mic and introduce yourself. Let's see. I see Haki. I see Miss Mia Brown. I see Malika. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Miss Burton. Hello, everyone. My name is Ms. Burton. I'm sorry for going in and out. I'm in a car on my way traveling home. Um, but I am the program manager over at Forest Park High School um, for the Next Generation Scholars Program. And I am excited to see. I'm excited to be here. I wish that I can go, uh, but unfortunately, I will be in LA. We have a conference through the Y. So I am very excited to see um, the outcome. And hopefully, me and Zariah can take lots of pictures. Thank you, Ms. Burton. I'm also in commute, so I completely understand. I just pulled over and said, we've got to get the job done. Uh, but we know that you'll be with us there in spirit, and we look forward to having you with us in the future. Um, Brother Haki, Sister Malika, uh, you want to come off and introduce yourselves and add something to the basket? Going once, going twice. <laughs> okay, family. Um, well, we look forward to receiving your completed applications. No, we look in. forward to seeing you. I'll come in. Hey, Kim. Oh. All right. Well, uh, good evening, everybody. Sorry, I was um, multitasking here today. So it's great, great to hear you all uh, in this uh, phen uh, phenomenal opportunity. I appreciate it. my name, Haki Ami. I'm I'm here from Baltimore uh, with Teaching Artists Institute. Uh, by profession, I'm a, a 17 year, well, a 17 year EMT firefighter. So uh, we look forward to um, showing some young people uh, just just safety and and first aid types of uh, training. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, so I have um, working on a brother that I was in the Navy. Uh, United States Navy uh, joining us as well, and he's bringing his daughter uh, with him. Uh, so, and he was, you know, in the Army and the Navy. So, uh, but we uh, did a lot of camping uh, opportunities together and, and have taught um, uh, survival training. So, we just going to do a, a show and tell, show different uh, survival things. And, and I think we still have a lot of our kits that we gave out to the young people from the last time. So, we'll see. Hopefully, we can. Uh, bring some of those as well. So, but thank you, Kim and Mama Day and uh, uh, Baba Ishakara and, and everybody else, all the other instructors that will be joining us uh, there. Thank you. There we go. Yes, thank you. Basic first aid, CPR, those things are necessities. Um, you never know, the person you save may be your own family member. And you learn these things in preparation for being in the wild. But usually you use those skills in this concrete jungle, helping somebody that you never expected would need it. So this is a perfect time to get those skills and start to practice. Um, how about one of our young people? I see Zariah Simmons is actually on the call. Zariah, did you want to introduce yourself? Let's see. We also have Mia Brown. Mia Brown is here. Anything you want to add to the basket? Mm. 
Uh, go ahead, Zariah. We waiting for you, honey. No. Hi. <laughs> Okay, that's okay, because you're coming to leadership camp, so you won't be shy for long, because we will have you at the front of the room, leading from the front, leading from behind as a servant leader, prepared to delegate leadership, authoritative leadership, participatory leadership, so you will understand what it means uh, to engage and take control of not just the room, but the trajectory of communities. And so we look forward to working with you um, in building and cultivating those skills. Um, are there any questions? I would love to answer questions. Um, you guys will have my personal contact number while we're there away. So if you don't have a question now, that's okay. <laughs> You'll have one soon and I'll be available to answer those questions uh, for you. Um, Sister Malika, I know that you're out of the Ohio region and you are representing that area. Any questions on behalf of your region? Uh, did you want to introduce yourself? Are you still with us? <laughs> Maybe your signal has disconnected. Um, no? Hey, hey okay. I just had to pull over. <laughs> <laughs> just getting off of work. You know, we multitasking, sisters. So good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, coming on behalf of uh, Sister Kim, the Shiro's group, and the Mama Ade's Cleveland crew, um, uh, I'm, I don't have any questions at this time, but really, really excited to meet all of the trainers and reiterate what we know and learn, learn new things and share whatever we have to share to the pot it's always a good experience with teaching artists institute so i know it's going to be great also sister malika talk about your experience with the scouts oh so i have a boy scout troop and that's what we are pushing to bring the boy scout troop out so that they can uh, partake in this leadership training um so everything that you guys are teaching are some of the things they have had some exposure to um but um, that that's you know that's the goal to keep them in the scouting, and the ultimate goal is to scout around the world because it connects them to a world organization. A lot of people don't know that it's not just scouting in America, but they're scouting around the world that these young people can be connected to. So it's a big big deal what um, what we have going this week coming up. Absolutely, that that really gets me excited. Um, this is about connecting uh, to other regions around the world. Our organization, the Teaching Artists Institute, we work in seven countries, and the U.S. is just one of them, six countries on the continent, and then in Jamaica and the Caribbean. On the continent, we work in Ghana, we work in Liberia, we work in the Gambia, we work in Uganda, we work in Tanzania. And even though those are the regions where we work and we have a physical location and compound, uh, we work with artists in many other countries um, that support our work, that engage in our trainings and receive resources to help build the capacity of what they do. And when it was time for us to decide what type of program the Teaching Artists Institute would offer right here in the US uh, to the artists in my own tribe, I realized that this story, the Underground Railroad, us being able to emancipate ourselves from the enslavement of the policy and legislation and the economic gains of this country, when we broke free of that, and we did it of our own will, simply because we believe that we were human beings. Um, that to me was a story that was so big. <laughs> it was so big that we had to develop programming around it and it's being lost. We have to take history off the page. We have to help our young people understand why that era of history is still relevant today. Harriet wasn't just uh, a leader politically and socio-politically because she emancipated herself from freedom. She was a scout. You had to know the land. Mm. Maryland, they have waterways here. Most of our young people, I say it all the time, they're afraid of the water. Mm. Can't swim, don't want to swim. Don't have a reason or a purpose to understand why that's even necessary. They, not only that, they don't know how to live off 
the ground. Uh, they don't know what agriculture is. They don't know what ferroging is or foraging, depending on whether you're from East or West Baltimore. They don't, and yes, foraging. They don't, uh, that's Cleveland over there. <laughs> so um, so it, it depends, you know, uh, all these things are necessary for survival today. Having a strong sense of identity, knowing what freedom looks like for you is important to identify young not when you're 50 trying to figure out who you want to be when you grow up. And so the younger we expose our young people to leaving their environment. Listen, Johns Hopkins, a hospital here in Baltimore, they do research and they started to do a research around rats, rats in Baltimore. And they said, based on their research, rats that grow up and live their lives in East Baltimore never travel to West Baltimore. And the rats that were living and lived their lives in West Baltimore never traveled to East Baltimore. And so, you know, they call us hood rats because we live in urban jungles and concrete jungles. But the truth is, is the moment you begin to travel, the moment that you begin to leave the place where you were born and you do it of your own free will, your world starts to broaden and you're no longer a hood rat like they talk about in that experiment, like they talk about in that study at Johns Hopkins. Because once you leave East Baltimore and you go beyond that and you find yourself in DC and you might've got on the Mark train and now you done found yourself in Virginia. And maybe one day you get on a plane out of Virginia in Dulles and you travel all the way back to Africa. Or maybe you find yourself in the Caribbean. These exposures in global learning they expand your ability to see yourself and to better imagine your community. You bring those lessons back to your own community and you help to develop it. And so this opportunity in Virginia is a big deal because some of our young people have never been to this area. Mm -hmm. And so they're gonna never they're not gonna forget it. They're definitely not going to forget it. And that's when learning takes place. Absolutely. When you're inside of that classroom, you forget most of the things those people say. It becomes monotonous. You hear the same thing in the same way every day. Mm -hmm. And it just all start to blend and sound the same. And you catch some things because we're naturally genius and brilliant. But for the most of it, I mean, you forget it and you never use it again. But these lessons that take you into immersion, that really have experiential learning and take knowledge and history off the page and engage you, you don't forget this. Your young people will never forget no. this trip to Massanutten. Yes. And so I hope that they don't forget all the lessons they'll learn as well. So again- I just wanted to piggyback off of what you're saying. Um, yeah. These experiences, are what made me what I am today. As a young person, my mother made sure that I got out and, 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 and traveled and did certain things and was exposed to certain things. And we didn't have any money, but she took her last dollar and we got on the bus and we went to a museum or we got out and into nature and, and learned about different things. And, and consequently, I, I never, I always wanted to go to Africa. I never thought I would be able to go. And now I'm a world traveler. I've been to five of the seven continents. Um, uh, and just teaching uh, as I do, just this past week, I was teaching a cooking class. And I asked a young man to get me a frying pan. He did not know what a frying pan was. I was astounded. Um, and and the, the head of the uh, agency said, well, I don't know why you're surprised because their parents didn't know and they didn't teach them. And so having these types of experiences is crucial to our legacy. Each one reach one, each one teach one each one save one. So um, I just absolutely in love with Kim Poole. I call her Kim Possible. And um, making these experiences available to all of we, because even as adults, I had never been to South Africa. And uh, last year going to South Africa was just absolutely fabulous. Natty, you have to tell me more because I enjoyed myself tremendously. I, I went to Nelson Mandela's house. 
I sat in his house. Who can say that? I can. Uh, just amazing experiences. So uh, parents, uh, y'all get on board too. And if you can uh, travel with us uh, at some of these events, because we're always doing something. Thank you. Look, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> I done learned a handful just yes. in this conversation. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> uh, what? Yes, indeed. Simmons, you are definitely invited. <laughs> we hope that at some point this year you consider, you strongly consider coming yes. with us and joining us. And if you don't have a passport, don't worry. We will get passports okay. for the Simmons tribe. Yeah. <laughs> we will make sure uh, that you all are well prepared to join us. Um, so basically that is it. Um, we will be departing from the Forest Park parking lot in Baltimore, in the DMV. So even if you're an instructor or a curator and you're gonna be riding with us, you will also be meeting us in the Forest Park High School parking lot. Uh, we will be leaving on Saturday, early noon. So early noon means we leave at noon, but early noon means you should be there by 11 so that we make sure that you're there at noon. We on the road here in the DMV, we are about three hours with traffic away from the Massanutten Resort. And so um, for the Ohio crew, I know that you all are flying in. And so that depends on your commute from the airport, depends on which airport you're flying into, whether that be Dulles or Richmond. So please send us your flight itineraries to let us know um, so that we can follow your journey until your arrival. Okay. If there are no other questions, <laughs> Um, I'm going to post my personal number inside of the WhatsApp group chat. I'm sorry, this is not WhatsApp. This is Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, inside of the Zoom chat, uh, please call me and send me a message, a text message. Text message so that I know who you are if you have any questions at all. I thank you guys again for your time. And again, I am available for communication, please, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Please ask us so that we know how to best serve you, make sure that your young person is enriched, that they enjoy their experience and make sure that everybody is safe. Thank you again for your time and you all have a great night.